Another simple sorting algorithm is insertion sort. The way that insertion sort works is that we will repeatedly insert an element into a list or a subarray that is already sorted. So I'll be taking arbitrary elements and then putting them in order within a sorted subsection of the array. Now, the sorted subsection is going to be at the front of the array, but although the elements there will be in order with respect to each other, they may not necessarily be in their final locations within the sorted array. So as we start, we're going to look at this first element, the five by itself, and if I'm only considering one element by itself, then that element is always sorted because there's nothing else to compare it to. So in a subarray of only one element, I have a sorted subarray. So this algorithm actually starts at the second element. The first element that I will try to insert is the three. Specifically, I'm going to insert the three into this sorted subarray that only has a five. Now, three is less than five, so when I insert it, I'll be putting it behind it. That means the three will go here, and the five will be pushed forward. So we'll have a five here, and then the rest of the array remains untouched. So now these two elements are guaranteed to be sorted with respect to each other, and the next element that I will insert is the eight. Now, as with selection sort, we sometimes have a special case where nothing actually happens. The eight is greater than five. So if I want to insert the eight into this subarray of three, five, I don't have to change anything. I just keep the three and the five where they are, and I leave the eight where it is, and then everything after that will remain untouched regardless. And so this is a case where we have two lines of our demonstration of the behavior of the algorithm where the contents are identical. They're different in the sense that eight is now guaranteed to be in this sorted subregion, but the actual positions of the elements have not changed. The next element we will insert is the seven. So we have to move some things around slightly. Notice that the eight is pushed forward, but that all of these elements are unmoved. Next, we insert the four. It has to go back a bit further. Then we insert the six. And then we'll insert the two. And here we have a case where the two is less than the first element of our sorted subarray. So it goes all the way back to the start. And then we're going to insert the one. And this is less than the two. So it also has to go all the way back to the start. This is actually the worst situation you can have with insertion sort, is when the element you're going to insert is less than all of the elements in the sorted subregion, because the way this is implemented is that all of these elements have to be shifted over one by one. So it's extra work when the element we're inserting becomes the new minimum value. And with that, we are done sorting. So at every step of the way, everything in this triangle remained untouched, and only the elements in this area got moved around, shifted. Um, importantly, as I said before, although the underlying portion was always 
in sorted order with respect to the other elements in that section, it was seldom the case that an element had found its final position. We have a three here. Eventually, the three ended up down here. The five was here at this step, but eventually it ended over there. So elements can still move around a bit within this underlined portion. Now, in terms of efficiency, the worst case for insertion sort is O of n squared. And this should be clear because I potentially have to move an element back to the beginning as happened on these last two steps. So here, the two moved one, two, three, four, five, six positions. Here, the one moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positions. And if the whole array were in reverse order, then we would be moving elements back the maximum number of positions every time. And I can quickly show that with a small example here. So if I did insertion sort here, I would move three back. And then the two back. And then the one back. And so this ends up being a typical, you know, one plus two plus three, et cetera, all the way up to n kind of amount of work. And that is n squared. Now, on the average case, this is technically also n squared because elements will move often less than the full range back to the beginning, but it averages out to be n squared as well. However, the fact that it is sometimes faster does mean that in terms of real execution speed, insertion sort is generally much faster than selection sort. And in the best case, insertion sort is actually O of n. And this occurs when the array is already sorted, as we can see here. So let's say this array is already sorted. I'm going to go through one position at a time and then decide how many steps to shift back each element. So I check the two. I don't need to shift it back. Check the three. I don't need to shift it back. Check the four, no shifting. Check the five, no shifting. Check the six, no shifting. So all I had to do was loop through the array and check each element once, hence O of n. I never had to shift anything back. That's where the extra work comes in. So in terms of implementation, there's one loop that's going through all the elements and then another inner loop that shifts elements back. But if that inner loop never shifts anything back, then we only do order of n operations. So insertion sort in practical terms is faster than selection sort. Now, there are other algorithms that are even faster than this, mainly because you know, n squared is still slow. However, the fact that we get this best case means that insertion sort is often good for fairly small arrays, which means it's actually a part of other sorting algorithms that are a bit faster. And we'll see this in a later video.